The Anthroposophical Art Impulse issues from the same source as the cognitive deepening. That source gives rise to thoughts and also to works of art, being itself deeper than either. It is, in fact, the being of man and world. The earliest picture of the Goetheanum is from around 1655 by Rembrandt. It is a future building, real but not yet built. Some version of a Christian knight defends it in a somber landscape menaced by distant fires. In 1907, the World Theosophical Congress convened in Munich, which was then a center of avant-garde art movements. Rudolf Steiner displayed what he called images of occult columns. That implies that the columns already existed, but invisibly. They were shown in large paintings by Karl Stahl, seven columns with seven different capitals. Then, as usual, Rudolf Steiner waited for a response. And indeed, the 21-year-old Karl Stockmeyer Jr. promptly asked him what kind of building these columns might belong to. All right, in this photograph, he might be older than that. Being a mathematician, the lad received some challenging indications about various intersecting ellipsoids, along with other architectural specifics for an underground rock temple. He and his father built a small model in Malsch, which Rudolf Steiner said was the first non-subterranean Rosicrucian temple. They lowered the floor to give people room to step inside. Gatherings were held there, and you can still visit the building today. The columns were now carved in three dimensions, and seven different bases complemented the capitals. The occult columns were approaching existence on earth. Thereupon the well-to-do Stuttgart branch, not wanting to be outdone, built them in stone. Later, the National Socialists commandeered the place, amputated the upper part of the chair backs, and installed projectors where the images of the occult seals had been in the balcony. A few years ago, some anthroposophists finally bought the room back. The columns were rescued to an anthroposophical sanatorium in Wiesneck in the Black Forest, where you can still see them today. The forms were becoming more sculptural. The occult columns were continuing toward incarnation. This current converged with that of the mystery dramas, in which the anthroposophical path of schooling, in its individual and community effects, is shown as a karmic work of art. These dramas were premiered in Munich in rented theatres, and soon awakened the need for a theatre suited to its content. Plans were drawn up but ultimately rejected by the authorities. This later proved a boon when anthroposophical activity was prohibited in Germany under the National Socialists, for the building ended up being built in Switzerland. Here, the occult columns have multiplied. The plans were still for a primarily interior building largely hidden behind a conventional façade 
and behind other buildings. Then the Blood Hill, as it would, was called, for a battle fought there for the independence of Switzerland, was donated for the building. After his first visit there, Rudolf Steiner appeared harrowed. Over the following years, the building arose on that hill in Dornach. As in Goethe's tale, the once hidden temple now stood on the surface of the earth. The occult columns emerged into full view. Vertically, three levels appear, a concrete base, akin in its material to the limestone of the local landscape, a middle zone where inner and outer meet in a rhythmic breathing carved of the wood of the plant kingdom, and the slate roofing gleaming in the light of the sky enclosing and protecting the inner space. This corresponds with threefold man. The proscenium arch, shown here in the upper foreground, features a shape carved in relief with a middle and two pairs of lateral movements in keeping with the gesture of the arch. The outer pair has thick ends, near where the supporting forces of the columns enter the arch. In the background, above the opening at the back of the stage, a variation of the same motif appears. The inner pair is straighter, more ray-like, than the receptive outer pair with its thick ends. The motif in the proscenium arch mediates a flow between stage and audience, whereas the motif at the back of the stage faces forward as an emblem. Comparable figures appear above other openings. Here, the outer pair sits in the response, the inner pair imposes mass. This being the front of the whole building, the motif comes toward you, whereas around the sides it lets you pass by. The situation this time is again frontal, but it is the front of a side wing. Accordingly, the figure appears without a strong center. Here is a closer view. A gentler variation on slender pilasters ensconces these side windows. You might think all these shapes are decorations, frills, which you may perhaps like or dislike. In this regard, one of the young architects, Hermann Ranzenberger, once asked a simple question. He saw Rudolf Steiner modeling the, the eaves trough and asked him how you go about finding shapes like that. The answer was, you ask yourself what happens. That is, Rudolf Steiner asked how water moves on round surfaces and revealed it in architecture. The broad curves let the water flow in keeping with its own nature. He developed realities, not some external stylistic affectations so often used in pseudo-anthroposophical architecture. So too, the light motif that appears above openings, where load and support are redistributed, makes visible the interplay of compression and tension at work in post and lintel situations, 
or in the keystone principle of the arch. During the building of the Goetheanum, Rudolf Steiner also helped with the beginnings of a renewal of the art of jewelry making. That let people elsewhere in the world see something of the language and form of the Goetheanum and its intimate jewel-like quality. In this ring, the two emeralds were cut from one stone. The forms are Cassinian curves, lines whose distance from two foci has a constant product, like this. When you enter a room, your astral body unconsciously calculates the proportions and resonates with their formative principle. And the same happens when you look at other things as well. Rudolf Steiner recommended texturing metal surfaces with a fine hammer so that the internal forces of the material and the external forming influences enter into a living balance. The chain too is characteristic. The alternation between lemniscate and oval gives rhythm. Both shapes are Cassinian curves. This form is based on the choreography for the Eurythmy exercise, Look Within You, Look Around You. Rudolf Steiner likened this building to a cake mold in a spiritual sense. It corresponds to the forms of organic living thinking developed in anthroposophy. That is, it offers a schooling to those who enter it and requires a speaker to shape the thoughts and language accordingly. <laughs>